multi-tonned animals kind of coming together with those huge heads. Quite a spectacle. 73 million years ago, this was the site of a massive dinosaur catastrophe. An estimated 40,000 dinosaurs perished in a single event, making it one of the biggest dinosaur graveyards ever found. Pipestone Creek in Alberta, Canada. And almost all of the bones came from just one species, Pachyrhinosaurus. We can have up to 300 bones per square meter. Just an unspeakable amount of dead Pachyrhinosaurus material here. It's believed this giant herd was in the midst of an epic migration when they were swept to their deaths by a sudden flood. But their tragic demise is now allowing us to solve some of the mysteries about how they lived. Pachyrhinosaurus resembles its distant relative, the far more famous Triceratops. But you'll notice one glaring difference. Triceratops have their iconic horn, whereas the nose of Pachyrhinosaurus is relatively smooth and flat, a chunky piece of solid bone known as a nasal boss. Pachyrhinosaurs are, are very unique in having that big, huge bone, bony bump on the nose, the boss. I can't think of any modern animal that has a, a directly analogous structure. So yeah. they have this I can't think big... of another dinosaur that yeah. that kind of a structure, like armored in a way. So obviously it was important for some reason. Exactly what the reason is has been puzzling scientists for decades. But as pack animals, a herd of Pachyrhinosaurus would have had a complex social hierarchy. And here, scientists can look to the modern world for clues. While the nasal boss is unique to Pachyrhinosaurus, many of today's herd animals have some form of ornate headgear. Come mating season, they use them to assert dominance and attract partners. The leading theory is that this is how Pachyrhinosaurus would have used its nose. For battle, a victory could make you king, but losing could mean death. Multi-tonned animals kind of coming together with those huge heads. The amount of force that they could potentially put on each other is, is, is incredible. Potentially deadly, not good news for the dinosaur. And just like in the animal kingdom today, Injury is only one of the risks of battle. Losing could mean banishment. And in nature, isolation is rarely a good thing. You actually have a lot of safety from predators in winning these combats. But mystery still surrounds these impressive dinosaurs. Did they charge each other at top speed? Or was their combat more subtle? facing each other down in an epic shoving match. I guess we could think of these fights as almost like high stakes armored sumo wrestling. The goal is to just be the one to push the hardest. You want to have a pretty, pretty sturdy, I think, base of the skull when you're doing something like that. You don't want to accidentally crush your own brain. Yeah, yeah. and there, there is evidence that these animals did engage in that kind of combat. With either strategy, the nasal boss would have been the front line of both defense and attack. And it appears they had a trick up their sleeve to protect it, because paleontologists believe it could have been covered in a thick layer of keratin. Keratin could potentially be in any shape and yeah. regrow pretty easily. Yeah, so yeah, you know, like keratin's what your fingernails are made of. And yeah. Obviously, they grow really fast. Absolutely. So it means that they could, you know, if it was damaged, they could regrow the keratin over top. That would be really beneficial if they were going head to head and they mm -hmm. were damaging their bosses, that they could just uh, heal and then be ready for the next season of, yeah. of, of running. This ability to recover from damage would have been crucial. For every vanquished opponent, Plenty more would have been waiting in the wings for their chance to challenge. There's still so much to uncover about these magnificent dinosaurs. But if we're ever going to unearth more of their secrets, 
It's likely they'll lie in the bone bed at Pipestone Creek.